Hi again, uh, we're back with forecasting techniques. And before we start with these forecasting techniques, what we need to talk about is the basic of basic principles of forecasting. Uh, now, uh, the first uh, principle is forecasting are usually incorrect. Most demand is dependent on so many variables. It is uh, impossible to capture the impact of all. So, uh, what does that mean? So, yes, it is inaccurate. However, we we have to uh, uh, to have a, an accurate uh, forecasting. We need to uh, increase the accuracy of our forecasting, and we will talk about a tool that we use to find out how far we are from the forecasting or what is called the uh, accuracy of the forecasting. So yes, the forecasting is incorrect or inaccurate, uh, but we're going to have a more accurate forecasting if we're using uh, families or a group uh, groups of products. Also, if we have a time period that are closer to present. So as long as you are close to that current, so if you predict the next week, that would be more accurate than predicting a, a, a year from today. So the longer the period would be the, inac the more inaccurate forecasting. So the shorter the period would be, uh, the shorter to the present would be an accurate forecasting. Every forecast should include an estimate of error. So whenever we do the forecasting, we have to calculate how far we are from the accurate um, uh, forecasting or from, from the accurate number. So this is what it's what is called the estimate of error. And we will show you, uh, I will show you just in just a second how you could calculate that. So the question is if the forecasting is in general is incorrect, why we're doing it? Well, it is we needed to plan. We need a point, a starting point to start creating some plans and anticipate some demand. The key to planning with forecasting is you need to ask yourself how wrong is the forecast likely to be, and this is what is called the forecasting error, and how, how will the plan accommodate for extended error, for expected error. So now, uh, number one is you need to understand this is incorrect, yes, inaccurate. However, that will give you a starting point to start your plan. Also, what you need to consider, you need to say how wrong is the forecast likely to be you know this is the forecasting error and then the other question is yes if there is an error of uh in the forecast what we should do about it all right now uh, we did talk about the uh, different techniques of forecasting one is the based on the uh, qualitative based on opinion uh based on experience uh and, and we did talk about the different types and now we're going to talk about the uh, qualitative, the qualitative based on judgment, uh, based on informed opinions, and this could be intrinsic or extrinsic. Extrinsic based on external indicators that are related to the demand. So, for example, if you have a, if you have a, a, a competitor who uh, uh, filed for ba for bankruptcy, that expect that you will have more demand. That's external factor. If you have a uh, a school that opened next to your uh, restaurant that maybe will increase the demand. If there is a business or a, uh, an office open uh, next to your business, that means more demand for your business. So that's external factors. In transit, that based on historical data, based on the current what you have. So starting with a naive forecast, that's a, a that very simple and very easy, uses a single previous value of time series as the basis for forecasting. So what we're doing is we look into uh, uh, the time period that is equal to the previous time period value, and we say this is the forecast. Uh, and, and this can be used when we can use the naive, uh, the naive forecasting is when we have a stable time series, when we have a seasonal variation, and when we have a trend. So if you say last year in the winter, we sold 1,000 mitten, so you're expecting that also this winter you will sell uh, 1,000 mitten, for example. So this is how the naive. So there, you're going exactly the same period in, as in the past and find out how much you sold, what was the demand, and then you're expecting that demand to be happening again this year. The other technique is the average, uh, uh, the moving average, the technique that average the number of the most recent actual values 
and generating the forecast. So what we do for the moving average, we say, okay, we need to use a three month moving average. So you go back to the last three months and then you predict what would be the demand for this coming month. If we said, no, we need to consider a four month moving average, then you add all these numbers, you divide them by four, and then that will give you the forecasting. And this is what is the moving average. Uh, a new data became, uh, as a new data become available, the forecast is updated by adding the newest value. So sometimes we say, okay, yeah, we need to use a three month um, uh, forecast and we forecasted the month, but actually what we sold maybe more or less. So now the new data that we received, we use it to predict the future months uh, as well. Uh, so we drop the oldest value and then we recalculate the average. The number of data points include the average determine, determine the model sensitivity, fewer data points used, more responsive, uh, more data points used is less responsive. All right, now there's also what is called the weighted move, moving average. So uh, sometimes we know that uh, this month, yes, we have high demand, but this is due to uh, one of the factors. So maybe we give weight less than the weight of the month before it. So in order to find out what would be the uh, uh, weighting, uh, the weighted moving average, the most recent values in time series are giving more weight in computing a forecast. So we say, okay, this is the most recent um, uh, information, the most recent numbers. I'm going to assign a weight higher than the previous month because this is the most newest month. I'll, I'll, I'll give you an example and just uh, not in this video, maybe in a, in a separate video, I will share a few examples on how you do these calculations. That would be better. But for now, let's talk about the theory of it and how we could apply it. Uh, we, could, we could apply it in an example in a different video. The choice of weights, W, is somewhat, um, you know, based on, on trial and error. You know, it's not, there's not no rule of thumb. It's... Uh, you could have a more weight for uh, the very uh, beginning period versus less weight to the recent period. It's really up to how you're going to uh, do the forecasting. Again, I will show you, I will share an example with you in a different video. Uh, all right, so if we take a look into this symbol moving average, we're taking the average demand as defined uh, of the past uh, period we're using the uh, last three months so we look into these data right here the last three months so october november and december we uh, calculate the data here and we divide we add them together divide them by three that would be the demand for the month of january uh, all right it, now the moving into the next uh, uh, forecasting technique, which is called the exponential smoothing. And this is uh, put more, more weight on the most recent months as uh, the old, uh, as on the old forecasting. If the, if the, if this does not seem suitable, maybe you could put less weight on the latest uh, actual demand and more weight on the old forecast. And one of the advantages for the exponential smoothing is that the new data can be given any weight you want. Uh, the weight given uh, to the latest actual demand is called the smoothing constant and it's represented by the Greek letter alpha. So the formula for the new forecast would be alpha times the latest demand plus one minus alpha times the previous uh, forecast. An alpha is a smoothing constant, and this is between a zero and one. So you select uh, any value between zero and one, you say 0.5, uh, and this will be what would be alpha or 0.2. It depends on where the weight you want to. Do you want to put more weight on the latest demand, or you want to put more weight on a previous demand? So if you want to put more weight on a previous forecast, that would be alpha 0.3, make alpha less than 0.5. If you need to put more weight on the a latest demand, then you put alpha to be more than 0.5. All right, so this is just a chart. We'll show you the impact of uh, alpha, the value of alpha. So this is the actual demand. The higher the alpha is, the more closer to the demand. The lower alpha is, the lower, the far away from the demand. But it does impact the demand. This is based on a, an actual example. Uh, it does impact the uh, uh, forecasting. Uh, it depends on where the weight can be uh, in, in 
to this is it, this is the traditional scenario that we see. The higher the value of alpha, the closer to the actual demand would be. All right. And the next forecasting techniques is the trend, uh, the the liner the, uh, the the liner trend. A single data plot, uh, plot can reveal the existing and nature of trend. So this is basically a, a linear a linear trend, which is basically you creating uh, just a, a, a line. You 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 create the data and then you ask to create the linear line to show the trends, and that will give you you know the traditional equation of uh, y is equal to a plus b um, times t. Uh, F is the forecast for period T, A is the value of F at time zero, B is the slope, and T is the specific number of time period from T zero. All right, so moving into more forecasting demand, this is the seasonal on index. This is another, we use it when we have a seasonal. Uh, for each season can compute the seasonal index using this calculation. When the seasonal index would be the period average demand divided by average demand for all periods. Index can be used as multiplier for future seasons. All right, let's take a look here. So this is will help you to understand the, the um, seasonal demand. So if we have this uh, product that we uh, have this information for three years, and this is divided by, by quarters, uh, and we added all these together, 122, 108, 81, 90, and we found the total to be nine, uh, 401. And the same thing for year two and year three, and we found also the average for each quarter per year. So if we need to find out what would be the seasonal index, you have to say the average quartal demand, uh, uh, quartal demand is 100 unit. How this is coming from, this is 400 divided by four quarters. So this is what we see the average the average quarterly demand is 100 unit. So the seasonal index for quarter one would be the demand for quarter one, which is 128. Uh, it's right here, the average of these numbers divided by 100, the average unit. So the, the seasonal uh, index would be 1.28. Quarter two would be 102 times uh, divided by 100, that would be 1.02. Uh, 75% quarter three and 95% on quarter four. Now, when we go in the future, what we need to do, we need to use the same information. All we need to do is multiply this season, seasonal index by the average demand to find out what would be the, how many units we need for each quarter. All right, so here's example. Uh, continue on that example. Suppose the same company forecast an annual demand of 420 units next year. The uh, average quartal demand is 104. So as you know, 420 divided by four, that would be 105. So now for quarter one, we need 1.28, which is we calculated in the previous slide here, times the 105 that we'll, we're expecting to sell 134 units. Same thing we did use 1.2 per quarter two, 0.75 for quarter three and 0.95 for quarter four. Uh, there's some rules for the uh, uh, seasonality forecasting, forecasting with seasonality. Uh, we use only the de-seasonalized de uh, data, de-seasonalized data to forecast. So the equation for de-seasonalized demand is equal to the actual demand divided by the index. and uh, base forecast is decentralized. We remove the impact of the season to find the actual demand, actual season forecast by applying the seasonal index to the base forecast. This is what actually can happen. Uh, also, the last technique that I want to talk about it is the uh, least square line. And this is another uh, equation to show the linear line or the least a senior line that will show you a more accurate uh, y would be the predicted variable, the dependent, x is the independent, b is the slope of the line, a is the value of y when x is zero, and we could use these equations. Uh, however, I will share with you an example to share with you this in more details, how you could apply this in more details. Correlation, that would be another, so the linear regression that we 
learned here, this uh, linear regression will show you just the, if there's a relationship or there's no relationship. But however, it's not going to tell you how strong the relationship. So we need an, we need another factor to, to let us know how strong is that relation. So that's called the correlation R, correlation coefficient. And this range between minus one and positive one, the higher, the stronger positive relation will be closer to positive one. The stronger the negative relation would be closer to minus one. Of course, there's an equations for here, but now with a lot of software, including Excel, you don't have to, uh, to do the calculation by yourself. All you need to do is using Excel. And again, I will share with you an example on how you could calculate all of this, demonstrating the application of this. Just I want you to be aware of these uh, theory first, and then we will go move on with applying this. Uh, R squared, square root of the, uh, or the square of the correlation coefficient. This is a measure of a percentage of, of variability in values of y that is explained by the independent variable range between zero and one. So zero means there is no relationship. One is uh, there is a relation, um, uh, uh, there is a strong relationship. So it's another, it's the square of R uh, of, the, um, of the correlation to show how strong is the relation. I'm gonna stop my video here. The next video will be about examples on how we could apply all these uh, forecasting techniques before we move on to the forecasting errors. Thank you. I'll see you in another video.